Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this new video in my quantitative reasoning act, I'll be solving this question you are seeing on the screen on quantitative reasonings. This question, I mean, uh, actually came out in this year comment entrance. So if you are interested or you are really keen about understanding how you can approach quantitative reasoning questions, then you've come to a right place. Sit down, take your pen, relax, click on the subscribe button so that you can see anytime I post a new video on this playlist. Thank you. If you don't forget, I told you, I mean, I explained in the last video that no doubt quantitative reasoning might be challenging. And one of the reasons why quantitative reasoning might be challenging is the fact that you are not the one who cracked the problem. I hope you understand that. And I gave an example that suppose I kept a key, I mean, in a, in a three-bedroom flat, then I ask you to go and search it for me. You understand now? Even if I put it in a room, it may take you a day before you can locate it. Because you won't know where to find it. Will you be thinking maybe should you go inside the fridge? Will you go to the kitchen? Will you go to the bathroom? Or did I put it on top of the television? You don't know. You understand now. So if that is the problem for a room, what about three rooms? I hope you understand now. So that's why quantitative reasoning might be a challenging. But the, I mean, uh, the, the good news is that this problem, however, it is challenging, but it's very easier I mean, and it is very interesting to solve. And don't forget, one of the tips I gave to you in the last video is that first of all, study the shape with which the questions come from. For example, now, if you check this kind of question, you will see that it is triangle in nature. So, and you have something of this nature from nine up to four and a half up to two. I hope you understand now. So you have to follow the trend. So this is suggesting, I mean, this shape, as well as its direction, is suggesting the relationship between all the numbers we're given. We're given four numbers, nine, four and a half, two, nine divided by four. What this one is saying is that this guy and this guy and this guy are closely related. And all these three numbers are actually those who actually produce the one inside the what? Inside the triangle. So the first rule, or the first hint is what? Check the shape you are given. Check the direction so as to establish a kind of relationship between the numbers you are given. And immediately you are done with this. Try and see whether the rule you now, I mean, get. Perhaps maybe you hack it using the rule. Try and see whether the rule works for all the examples you are given. For example, in this case, we are given three examples. Then I have to ensure that all the three examples I, I was given I mean, holds for all the three examples. So if the rule does not hold for them, or it fails for at least one of them, then you cannot use that rule. And that's why you have to be aware of distractors, because some examiner, they will just, I mean, use different rule for the first one that is different from all other, what, all other questions. So if you are not careful, or you just rush to the question by the fact of the fact that you what, you understand, I mean, your rule works for the first one, and you don't test it for the remaining examples, then you might be wrong. I hope you understand now. So, uh, don't forget, an example of distractor is three. I gave you, I said, when you have three multiplied by three, three multiplied by three is nine. But because of exam curiosity, many students may select six. And many of the exam now just put option C at the first option, so that you can just what? So, you can just click it so as to get it wrong. It's just like a page. Okay, now. And immediately you've established relationship between all of them. Now think of any of the arithmetic rules, be it addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, or combination of both, or many of them. So whether if you combine some of these rules together, whether it's going to work for I mean, whether it's going to hack it for you. If that does not work, combine them together. If that does not work, you can use your square. You can use your square root. In fact, some of them comes with modulo. But I'm telling you for free today that it cannot exceed all these words, all this rule I've just mentioned. It can just either be addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, square, square root. 
maybe modulo in some times, uh, at some point, keep roots, keep. It doesn't go beyond this, guy. I hope you understand, especially for the basic of students in basic school. I hope you understand. So, how do we now solve this kind of question? I have nine, four and a half, two. Your mind should all, first of all, think about the words, about the shape. We have in triangular. Uh -huh. That is saying that all these three numbers are closely related. Okay, let us think about it. Oh, if I were you, some people might be saying, okay, now, what if I say nine divided by two? You understand now? Yes, you might be correct. Nine divided by two, you know, nine divided by two is an improper fraction. That is four whole number one divided by two. I hope you understand. Oh, we are correct. Then we've been able to establish that the two numbers at the bottom, when you divide them, you are going to have it at the top. But you must not conclude the yet. Check if it's actually true for the rest of the, I mean, uh, examples. For example, now 12 times, uh, 12 divided by 4 is also 3. Uh -huh. Half divided by half is 1. Half divided by half is the same thing as half times 2. I hope you understand. Half multiplied by 2 and 2, we cancel 2, which will give you 1. That also work. Okay, now, we've been able to establish that the two bottom numbers, when you divide them together, is going to produce the one at the top. Okay, what, what about the one at the middle? I hope you understand. Think about it. Since 4 and a half here, and we have 8, 1 divided by 4 here. This is 3, you have 9 here. This is 1, you have 1 here. I hope you understand. Now, it means when you square this, for example, now, you know, 9 divided by 2, your mind will know, okay, yeah, this is 9. Well, if I square 9, I'm going to have 81. If I square 2, I'm going to have 4. I hope you understand. It means when you take the quotient, that is, you divide the two numbers together, the results you obtain from your division, just square it. It will produce this. Okay, let us check it for, I mean, uh, uh, the rest of the two examples as well. 3 square, 12 divided by 4 is 3. 3 square, we also give you 9. Uh -huh. Half divided by half is one. One square is also one. Uh -huh. Once you've been able to establish this, then you can now move to the questions. Okay, let us move move at this question now. We have 16 to... You don't need to stress yourself. This is very simple. Don't forget the rule is that when you define the two numbers at the bottom, it will produce the one at the first... I mean, uh, at the top here. It means, what are you going to divide by 16 to give you two? That is eight. Because 16 divided by 8 will give me 2. So you have your answer for free. Okay, look at this guy as well. So you have 1 over 4 divided by 4. 1 over 4 divided by 4, you can change your division to multiplication. That will multiply by 1 over 4 again. I hope you understand now, which gives you 1 over 16. I hope you, you know we have it. And don't forget, to obtain this, you have to square this. And that's going to be 1 divided by 16. Everything squared. That is 1 times 1, 1. 16 square will give me what? 256. So then you have 256. That's why I have, you have to be careful. If you check here, you know, some people might select this as an answer because some people might think 16 square is 32. No. 16 square is not the same thing as 16 times 2. 16 square is 16 multiplied by 16. And lastly, can you check this one? How do you do this? It's not difficult to do as well. If I were you or if you don't know how to do, just represent this with S. You know, this divided by this actually produce this. Then just say x s divided by 4 is equal to 1 divided by 6. Now you find the value of s, s that's s divided by 4 is equal to 1 divided by 6. Then you are going to have 6s equal to 4. So then if you conclude or you do it further and divide both sides by 6, your s will not be what? So S will now be 4 divided by 6. And you have to be careful. You have to give your answer in what? In the lowest term. And S divided by 4 divided by 4, 5, 2 here, 2. So and 2 in 6 is 3. And your result is equal to 2 divided by 4. I hope you understand because this is very simple. In the next video, I'm still going to what? Give you, I mean, a more cumbersome question. If you are really keen in understanding how you can approach quantitative questions, then you've come to the right place. Why not please click on subscribe button, click on the like, share with your friends so that they can also benefit. Also click on the bell button so that you get notified anytime I post new videos on this series. Also I've made different videos for in, in different aspects of mathematics, SSE mathematics from zero to guru, complex analysis the easy way, calculus in five minutes, and many videos where for the case of, uh, for the use of students, 
in high school. Till I meet you in the next video. Thank you very much.